Hey there folks, Bob Yeager here. So I was talking the other day about my cucumber plants and trellising them, uh, how I start them. Uh, this stuff here, it's called Hortanova uh, Garden Trellis. I'll go up and get the package in just a second. Uh, but that's, I know my one post is bent. That's just temporary post. Uh, but that's how it goes. That's about uh, 35, 40 feet of it, right? And it took me about maybe five minutes to put it up. So all you do, you want UV resistant zip ties. So you zip tie your top like that. And it's made of this polypropylene. It's really strong. I mean, I was stretching it really hard. The only thing I'd say is if you're gonna be stretching it really hard with your hands, put some gloves on, it might cut your fingers. Mine are all calloused over, but. Um, so now I have about a six foot tall trellis. Um, the, this measurement of this trellis is 59 inches high and 100 feet long. So almost five feet high, 100 feet long. And then what I did was, um, as you know, I stretched it above the ground. It's not right on the ground or anything. So you, you can put it up to two, three feet high and just train your plants to climb up it. Uh, Cause these are indeterminate cucumber plants. So they'll, they'll grow as high as I let them. Um, but yeah, it took about five minutes to put it up and it's just zip tied on. I just still got to zip tie the centers um, and then what I'm going to do is, I don't have them right now. I'm going to put up some uh, three, probably three metal T-posts in between here to strengthen it up. Because these uh, garden stakes that I have here, these are just cut from some warp two by fours and they're not absolutely uh, completely strong. So as I'm doing my garden, I'll add some T-posts in between, three or four of them. And uh, then I'll end up getting rid of the wooden posts in between because they're just temporary anyway but makes for a nice trellis um what's nice about that is that's a hundred foot package i think you can get it in 300 feet package but uh 59 inch by 100 feet was about 20 dollars 20 dollars where although i love the uh cattle panels and everything they're 16 feet long and uh about 48 inches high. I use them for arches and stuff, and they're about $25 a piece plus tax, right? So you're almost at 30 bucks for 16 feet, where I get these for $20 for 100 feet. <coughs> and they're a bit taller. Comes in a pack like this. When you first take it out, you'll, you'll think, man, that looks like a spaghetti string mess. Now, once you roll it out and you find the top, um, so all you're gonna do is like zip tie the top corner, stretch it to the next post, do the top, stretch it to the next post, do the top. Keep doing that. And as long as your posts are even, you should be able to go through and do the bottom, start from the same end that you started from with the top, zip tie the bottom corner, keep going over, or even just the middle, keep going over each post and then go all the way down to the bottom, stretch it really tight. Um, so I put it an arm length over my head, um, about that, about an arm length over my head. Um, so this is 59 inches by 100 feet. It's 10x Hortanova trellis netting. And I bought two rolls because uh, I have a big garden. And I got that from uh, Haas Tools. It's just HaasTools.com. And I'll tell you how quick it came. I ordered it on Friday and it came today, which is Monday. Yeah, so pretty quick. Um, shipping. I think it was like seven bucks. Uh, so it was, I think it came to uh, $47.99 or something like that for two rolls. Most people are only gonna need one, uh, but you can reuse this. So you can take this down and reuse it the next year. Um, I would expect some breakage at some point in some of these, uh, cause they're not metal, they're polyurethane or polypropylene, I'm sorry. Um, but it's strong. I mean, I was stretching it really hard. I did notice just full transparency. I did notice in the center of one of the rungs, it was it was ripped. It looked like a manufacturing defect. Uh, it almost looked like it was melted. Let's see if I can find that spot. Cause I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna zip tie it together, but I'm not all that concerned about it. It's just plastic garden trellis. Uh, so yeah, so right here, this this part was ripped 
So instead of a six inch hole, I got about 10 inch hole right there, which I'm not too overly concerned about. Um, so expect that. I mean, it's a plastic thing, right? Um, but this should be down like that with this cross piece up here like this. And that, that was broken out of the package. I'm not overly concerned about it, like I said. But I literally just started from the corner of the roll, zip tied it up there, did the bottom. I still have to do the centers. I do bottom centered and, or I'm sorry, top and centered and bottom. And then do, you know, so what I do is the top on each post all the way down through, then come back through and do the centers, stretch it down tight and do all the centers and stretch it over tight when you go to the next post, right? And don't cut your roll until you're done, until you're done stretching this out, okay? Once you get like the top and the center done, go ahead and cut it um, and then stretch your bottoms, right? But always start from the same end that you, you started with for each of the, the three, the top, middle, and bottom, all right? Um, but yeah, so these will grow up. Any indeterminate plants or vining plants uh, that don't have a determinate height, like uh, pickling cucumbers can actually get to be, you know, 12 feet tall if you have a long enough growing season. Um, I stop them at around six feet because that's fine or they can just grow over the other side, I don't care. Um, a lot of times what I'd do in this situation, if they did grow to the top, I'd take some more of this netting here and I'd just lace it to my fence back here on these posts and I'd have like a tunnel basically that I can reach because I, I can reach that high, you know, so it's not too high. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. But for the price of this, it's really worth it. Now, I will say this just because I'm, I'm, I'm really a nature guy. You guys get, if you ever throw this stuff away, right? Cut the, cut the holes. I mean, luckily it's not too bad, but I'd shred this stuff. Like I, I would cut every hole out of it. I cut it into strips. Um, so no animals get tangled up on it. Cause you know, even if you put it in your recycling bin, the chances of it getting recycled and not dumped in the ocean is slim to none uh, in case you didn't know that. So they don't recycle everything you send to the recycling center, just so you know. Uh, so I'd shred this pretty good, actually. Um, I think we can get a few years of use out of it. Now, this is actually a, a big Southern farm secret. They've been using these um, Porta Nova trellis, trellises for years. Um, and man, I mean, literally, if I put if I was putting cattle panels up, I'd be putting T posts in, hammering those in. Not to mention the expense of the T posts. You know, they're you know eight bucks, nine bucks a piece for tall enough ones. Um, then I'd be tying them to each of those, or I'd be putting four by four posts in the ground, so digging post holes, twenty dollar four by fours, and then steepling those cattle panels on. And it's still not going to be as tall as I want it to be. Um, this took five minutes. You know, even when I drove those crooked sticks in the ground the other day, that only took about four or five minutes to do. I, I just went through. I take a shorter one and I pound it real deep, about two feet into the ground. And then I just press those into the ground. And what I do is drive a stake in next to them to study them up. Um, I don't care if they're crooked or anything. That doesn't bother me because, like I said, I'm going to be putting permanent T-posts in between this netting i'll actually be using next year so it'll stay up or i'll take it down and roll it up so it doesn't get the winter weather i'm not sure yet um, but i'm doing the same thing for my tomatoes uh because my tomatoes are these are beef steaks they're indeterminate they can get to be about 12 feet tall once again if you let them um, i typically top my tomatoes at about six feet because i can't reach over that i'm five foot nine <laughs> so <laughs> you know over six feet I'm, I'm pushing my luck and plus the weight of them you know but trellising like this allows me to be able to plant my 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 plants a lot closer together because i'm vertically growing they're not going to be crawling all over the place um and i can let them grow wide if i want to but i can do selective pruning and really really aerate these plants so i'm not getting a lot of rot and mildew in, in different kinds of pests um not to mention i can make my trellis as tall as i want them to be right so with my indeterminate plants indeterminate just simply means there's no determinate height it'll just keep on growing until the frost kills it basically um, with your determinate plants you know you can stake them so they don't fall over in the weather like I do with my pepper plants and things like that uh, but you don't need to trellis determinate plants 
but your indeterminates don't let them sprawl all out i mean imagine these tomato plants i actually have them planted further apart than i would typically do i usually do about um, 20 inches apart on my beef steaks i'm doing 24 right now because i'm interplanting i'm going to be planting uh mint and uh, basil and um, onions and things in between all my tomato plants because they do a really good job of interplanting um, the marigolds put off a chemical that actually um, kill some um, um, a bacteria that gets into the roots of tomato plants um, mint pests don't like them they don't like the smell of it uh, same with onions onions chives and those things all grow really really well under the shade of a tomato plant so once these plants get a bit bigger i'll be interplanting some of those other pest control items and things that we'll actually be using too like the basil and stuff um, we do use right um, with the uh, cucumbers once they get to a certain point i might plant some uh, dill in between them because once again i have those fairly far apart too um, they may not seem like it but they are um, so all i do now is now that i have the trellis up and I already have these other strings here and everything so all I have to do is zip tie this string up and it's already training these cucumbers to come up right so real simple process not hard to do but that's why I start on these strings so when I go by the time I get one of these trellises up all I have to do is zip tie these strings up and the, I already got the cucumbers started and to be trained to, to grow straight up to grow vertically so that's it just thought I'd show it to you guys